Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about mostly knitting here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, where winter has come. <laughs> it has snowed and it's cold and I'm really grateful to have a nice home to cozy up in uh, and my knitting. How about you? When the weather gets cold, do you reach for your hand knits? I certainly have. Um, I'm wearing a hand knit today. This is a cardigan and I can't remember the name of it, so I'm gonna put it right here on the screen. Let me show it to you. Ta-da! This is a sweater that I knit a couple years ago. Hi there. And I, uh, it's an Andrea Mowry pattern. It's the lady version of the spice cardigan that I'm knitting for my dad. And uh, I was inspired to wear it today, mostly because of my knitting. And uh, maybe it'll push me over the edge and help me finish. Um, this sweater is knit in some DK yarn. It's Harrisville Nightshades. Um, and I used the spin cycle in the dyed in the wool high glue, um, which is a sport weight. So again, I switched up the weights of the yarn and I knit a slightly bigger size to get the size that fit me. Um, and that is what I'm wearing today. Cozy uh, cardigan for a cool day. How are you? How are things where you are? Uh, my house is in complete upheaval. My house is in complete upheaval. We got new windows last week, which was sort of this window of opportunity when the weather was um, slightly warmer and it wasn't freezing and it was okay. Um, we had all of our windows replaced, which was great, but now my husband's spending a lot of time He's doing so much work, um, painting all of the uh, trims and the paint and, and making sure everything looks good again and reinstalling all the blinds. And so there's just stuff everywhere. And it's really hard to be in the Christmas spirit when your house has got like stuff everywhere. But I'm trying really hard because uh, it's December and it's time to start thinking about the holidays. Um, and now knitters start thinking about holidays much sooner than maybe most people because we like to knit um, gifts for the people that we love. And so um, I have a couple of things that I am knitting as gifts and I'm sure you are too. Um, why don't we dive into what I'm working on? How about what I'm finished? <laughs> um, I have, perhaps to no one's surprise, finished another Sophie scarf. <laughs> This one is knit out of some leftover Walcott Opus yarn, it's, which is a um, finger, or not fingering, sport weight yarn. Um, turns out you can use whatever yarn you want. This one, I'm not even sure who gets this one, but they're very lucky, because check out this scarf. This, is, this right here is why this is the perfect gift. I really don't think that there's too many ladies in your life who wouldn't appreciate this little scarf. I um, had dinner with some friends last weekend and I gave them both Sophie scarves um, and my one friend is going on a pretty big hiking trip next year that she's super excited about and she can only pack so many so much because she's gonna have to carry it all on her pack and, and she said oh this would be perfect for my trip because it's so small and light but it'll keep me warm so you just never know who's gonna appreciate a Sophie scarf I think I might be done knitting Sophie's Sophie scarves for now um, but you never know, you may see them again in the future. It's such a perfect pattern and I encourage you to check it out. Uh, the other thing that I finished in the last couple of weeks is a pair of socks. And uh, this pair of socks was a part of an Andrea Mowry fall knit along. She does this um, most years in November of the American Thanksgiving weekend. Um, the challenge is to knit a pair of socks starting Wednesday afternoon and finishing Monday by noon. Uh, this year's sock pattern that she came out with is a DK sock yarn or sock pattern. Um, or you can use two fingering weight yarns held together, which is what I did. So these are my bear paws socks that I finished. Oh, look how bright they are. That I finished for the bear paw cow. I used some Lillian pine yarn that I picked up at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic in November, which was perfect timing. Uh, and I held them double. So here it's two, two strands of the main color, two strands of the contrast color, and then marled throughout. It's a really interesting heel. Um, and these socks 
look funny, I think, because they're ribbed and they suck in. Um, but once you put them on your foot, these fit me really nicely. The one thing um, for me, I knit these socks a little bit too long in the foot. They're a little long <clears throat> when I put them on, which is, it's fine. They're for me and they're house socks because they're so like thick and gushy. I can't stop feeling them. Um, that it, uh, it doesn't really matter if they're a little bit long, but I learned um, for future uh, pairs of socks that I knit in this pattern or in this way, um, how long to knit the foot um, before beginning the gusset increases. These socks are knit toe up, um, which is not my usual, but I'm getting better at it. I love a Turkish cast on and I'm getting, again, good at that. The more you do it, the better you get. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with these socks. These are for me. <laughs> um, and uh, But you'll see these this pattern again soon. I promise. In fact, I'll show it to you right now. <clears throat> because of the amount of yarn that I used for this pair of socks, I believe I have enough to make another pair. If I make them um, a little shorter in the foot, which I had planned to do anyway, um, and a little shorter in the leg. So I have cast on another pair of bear paw socks. These ones are for my older daughter. Um, she told me that she liked the colors of the ones I was knitting. And so um, I had to reverse the colors um, to get, to make sure I had enough because you use slightly more of the main color than the contrast color. So this is, uh, again, the con the contrast color from my first set of socks. I just flipped them and I'm just starting the um, gusset increases. So uh, these are going along nicely. I am being uh, somewhat cautious to make sure I have enough yarn to get me through this pair of socks. So what I'm doing is measuring, uh, using a weigh scale, which I think a lot of knitters have. It's a very handy thing to have on hand to measure, to see how much yarn you have, how much you've used, etc. cetera. Um, so what I did was I put a little bulb, light bulb, a light bulb, a bulb, light bulb, um, stitch marker in my knitting, and then I knit eight rounds, which is one uh, inch of knitting for this pattern in this yarn. And then I weighed my yarn again to see how much yarn I used. And so for for an inch uh, of in this marled ribbed pattern, I used a, between two and three grams of yarn. So I, I'm using that information to help guide me on how much shorter I should make this pair of socks um, in the leg um, to make sure that I have enough. So my plan is to make the foot shorter by about an inch and then um, make the leg shorter by, I think two inches. And that should give me plenty of yarn to finish up a second pair of bear paw socks. So that is what I have on the needles. Uh, and I have one more big project on the needles. And it is my dad's spice cardigan. And let me tell you, I have been um, quite dedicated to this project since last we spoke. And I can't remember where I was. Had I joined the sleeves yet? I don't know. Um, let me show you where it is now. Oh, my dad and I are gonna be twinsies. So I finished the body. I have attached the sleeves. I did all of this raglan shaping. And then I started the shawl collar. Now shawl collars, uh, as you can see, <laughs> they're no joke. Like they take up a lot of yarn. So um, I am using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter as the main color for this yarn. And I have already used um, probably a, mm, almost two skeins of yarn for this shawl collar. <laughs> It is a bit of a beast, um, but it's coming along really great. And I think it's going to be, oh, this is really hard to show you. Um, let me see if I can, I'll post some pictures up and explain to you where I'm at. So I have knit um, nearly the entire shawl collar, uh, which will look exactly like this sweater. So um, I've been working on my dad's sweater and the shawl collar, which also includes a button band. And I wanted to share with you that I have been um, using that 
Patty Lyons book that I shared with you last time. Um, it's a book that recently came out by Patty Lyons called Patty Lyons Knitting Bag of Tricks. And in that book, she gives um, a lot of tips on how to solve some nagging kind of knitting issues that knitters see, um, but don't necessarily always talk about. There's someone cross country skiing outside my window. Sometimes this time of year offers very peaceful images like someone gliding across snow. That was really nice. Uh, anyway, Patty Lyon's book um, offers uh, an interesting take on a buttonhole. And buttonholes aren't something that I knit a ton of, but when I need a buttonhole, I want one that looks good. The one on this sweater that I knit, um, actually, as I'm looking at it, is not too bad. And uh, I used, I believe, a one row buttonhole, but that can create some some holes. So I thought I'd try um, Patty Lyon's buttonhole. And I think it looks pretty good. There's one. There's another one. It looks pretty firm. And if I hold up the sweater, um, the buttonholes don't really stand out as looking gapy or strange. So I'm quite happy with the way those turned out. There are millions of ways, not millions, exaggeration. Um, there are many, many ways of making buttonholes. And so I encourage you to sort of um, have a look around and try uh, different ones if you're not happy with the buttonhole that you like to do. My go-to lately has been the one row buttonhole, but Patty Lyons version is also very nice and it creates um, a quite firm buttonhole without gaps. So I would recommend it if, you, um, if you're interested in a different buttonhole. The shawl collar on the sweater I'm knitting is exactly the same as this one. Uh, so that's great. And I'm at the point where I need to start doing the I-cord bind off. I-cord bind offs are a really great way to finish um, an edging like this. They're, here, let's zoom in. Can you see that I-cord edging? It's stretchy, but it's got um, enough body to hold this edge out from being stretched out. Uh, so I look forward to starting that. However, if you've ever knit an I-cord bind off, you know, it takes some time and some yarn. So uh, I have this much left in this skein of yarn and one more um, of the shelter. So that should be fine. Um, and I'll be piddling around with my I-cord bind off for the next day or two. And then I just need to finish the pockets. My dad's sweater, unlike mine, has some afterthought pockets. So I put some, put some lifelines in and then I put some waist yarn in and I'll be knitting um, an afterthought pocket. There's a couple different ways of doing an afterthought pocket. One way is to make um, like a tube. <clears throat> so that would be separate from the sweater itself and then sew up the bottom. Or you can knit a flap and then sew that flap to the sweater and then that creates the pocket. Um, I haven't decided which one I'm going to do. The pattern suggests making the flap and, and attaching it to the, um, the sweater itself. So I might give that a try and see how I like it. If not, I might knit the tube. We'll see. Um, but then that's all I have to do. Once I finish the I-cord bind off and um, knit up some pockets, then this sweater will be done. So I'm really happy. I'm very confident that this will be done by Christmas. I'm just waiting for some buttons to show up in the mail. And uh, I'll let you know how that goes over the next couple weeks. Are you uh, are you getting ready for Christmas where you are? Do you have some advent calendars? I have a couple of advent socks on the go, but I don't want to show you yet um, because it's very early in the month and some people um, need some time to get started on their advent socks. So perhaps next time I'll show you my progress on my advent socks if you're interested. Uh, I have been doing some Christmas baking uh, and I, I I don't know about you, but I, I really like baking for the holidays. I like sharing sweet things. It's something nice. Um, and my plan is to share some of my baking with my new neighbors in my new house. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing some of that love. I've made um, chocolate chocolate chip cookies. I have made some chocolate ginger cookies that are really delicious. I have made some gingerbread and I have made... That might be it. That might be all I've made so far. I do have plans. I'm going to make some butter tart squares, which I've shared on this channel before. Um, I'm also going to make some 
sugar cookies with sprinkles on top. And then I'd also like to try making some biscotti, but I have not had very much success with biscotti recipes. If you are an accomplished biscotti baker and you have some favorite recipes, please share them in the uh, description box below. I really would appreciate that. Um, this is a very short and sweet episode because I think we all are feeling a little bit overwhelmed this time of year. I have gifts in the mail and I have ugh, stuff going on in my house that needs attending and, um, and other things on my schedule. So ma making it hard to really focus on um, enjoying the holiday season. But I'm really hoping that by next week, some of those things will be settled down. We'll have a tree up and I'll have some eggnog or some very, very mm, holiday-ish beverages going um, and make some time to just sit and enjoy this season. I hope you do that too. Um, it's really easy to get bogged down in all the things that need to get done. Um, and so I encourage you to take some time to enjoy this this season. Enjoy being cozy. Enjoy spending time with your loved ones. Enjoy doing the things that um, make the holiday special for you, like decorating a Christmas tree, for example, or uh, baking, or just getting together with the people that you love. I hope in the next couple of weeks you find time to do those holiday things. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.